G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday morning here in Australia, market has bounced back ever so slightly. Not really too much, so it's less than a percent. So I'm still not sure that this dip is completely over yet. We'll have to wait and see. The weekend is upon us. Obviously in the weekends we've been dipping a little bit, but things can change very, very fast. So at least there's a nice little bit of a reprieve right now. But again, I'm just not 100% sold it's over just yet. So we'll have to wait and see, but we can, we can hope. Uh, there's always that possibility. But look, again, market's still under 2.7 trillion. We were up at that $3 trillion mark and it didn't stay at 3 trillion for very long. And that's really when the dip started. There's a lot of theories out there about why things happened. You know, the leverage longs were too much. But I think it was a combination of a bunch of things. As I said the other day, I think it was more so the market hit two, uh, sorry, three trillion. It was just, you know, it's one of those big numbers. People just generally take profits at big numbers again. You know, like when Bitcoin gets close to 60,000, people were taking profits. When it got close to 70,000, people were taking profits. And so when the market cap got to that three trillion dollar mark, it got over it just a little bit. A lot, of, a lot of people took profits, but again, a lot of the people were going long as well. So a combination of a multitude of things and obviously the Mt. Gox news. All right, Bitcoin dominance, 42%, still under 43%. Not much has changed there. Volume is down. Bitcoin price now 60500 We'll have to wait and see whether this will hold or whether we're going to go down lower again. And gas price is sitting around about sort of 10 bucks, And that's for a very basic transaction, literally just moving ease from one wallet to the next you may be able to do it for ten dollars anything else is going to cost a lot more all right looks like a sea of green at the moment which is good and we've def definitely got some big movers there so avax is doing well what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100 oh gala i don't know anything about that but came out of nowhere bora as well 52 percent uh crow doing nice kadena wrap uh sorry wax still going avalanche now what i noticed i got a notification before was the voyager token jumped up 52 percent now that may have been very quick lived and maybe it's dumped back down because i can't see it in here and i was pretty sure the voyager token was in the top 100 but i guess we'll find out with the losses because that may have dumped pretty quick as well but yeah look some nice double digit moves but I wouldn't get too carried away just yet because, again, I am still somewhat nervous that maybe we've still got some more downside to see. But hopefully not. All right. <laughs> now look at that. 119%. So starting to move. All right. What hasn't bear, fared so well in the top 100 then, considering the market's been sort of all over the place? There we go. IOTX is down. Live Peer, Olympus Dow's down. Zcash, Dash. But look, I mean, the losses are pretty minimal right about now. So yeah, you know, single digit losses. So hardly anything is down. Uh, and considering the market's only moved less than a percent, uh, people are quite bullish. But again, you know, you go outside of the top 100, I'm going to say there's coins that have sold off a lot and probably aren't doing quite so well. All right, let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and look where we're at. So again, got to bring this down. We've still got our $88,000 target of where we're thinking to go. And now Bitcoin is really just kind of bouncing around here. It's waiting to see what happened. Like I said, I'm not going to be surprised if we don't come down and sort of touch this line over the next few days, sometime over the weekend. That really wouldn't surprise me at all. So again, maybe getting down to sort of $58,500. Now it'll probably be a wick or something like that. Uh, we'll have to wait and see where we, whether we're going to get a solid candle body close down in the kind of $58,000 range. Again, I definitely think it could come over the weekend, but nothing I say is ever financial advice and there's no guarantees in life. Maybe the dip is over. Maybe this was it and we're going much higher. Maybe we need to come back down and retest somewhere around about sort of here. I don't think we're coming down to 52,000. Definitely a possibility, but I think maybe a possibility is 55 to 57,000. That is not out of... Uh, not out of the ballpark at all. I don't think it's going to do that. But I mean, look, it could come down to there. Because again, that's at the bottom of the thing. Maybe sometime later today or tomorrow, we get a, a candle wick again that comes down to 57,000. Because you can almost guarantee people are already probably starting to go long now. And if the longs get too out of hand, then you can guarantee 
well not guarantee but it's highly likely that another uh, sell-off will come to really just again get rid of the people who are trying to use leverage leverage is good uh, if you really know what you're doing and you set in tight stop losses and things like that but 90 something percent of people who use leverage uh, they just end up getting wrecked traders that is just the way it is investing is a whole lot easier all right, so again, keep an eye out for that. Now, I have some uh, buy orders set in for Bitcoin, a little bit under where these uh, candle bodies are at the moment. I also have that for Ethereum, and we'll have to wait and see. I may have already missed it, and if I have, then it doesn't matter. I've got uh, cash sitting on the side for another time. All right, a couple of news stories. So Australian basketball club Perth Heat will pay salaries in Bitcoin. Now, they're not going to pay all the salaries in Bitcoin. They are going to give them the option. And so what they've said is the BT settlements will not be mandatory as every player and staff on the team will choose how to receive their salary. I think there's a good chance a number of staff uh, and players will likely opt for, you know, 5 10%, something like that in Bitcoin. Same, some may be, you know, even crazier than that and go a whole lot more. But I think this is going to become part of the norm in the not too distant future. I really do see Bitcoin spiking up to you know really high levels at some stage. I'm just not sure it's coming you know in that December sort of time frame when a lot of people are expecting it. But I definitely do see it happening at some stage. I think the Bitcoin FOMO is going to start to catch on. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be till Bitcoin hits that kind of one hundred ish thousand dollar range. That's when people are probably really going to start to FOMO in. And then it'll be crazy to see just how high the price can be pushed from that $100,000 mark. Now, Perth Heat have also come out and said that they might accept Bitcoin as a payment method for merchandise sponsorships and ballpark concessions on game days. Look, I think a lot of clubs are already going to try and do this. The only thing is I can't see too many people paying for anything in Bitcoin. It is that store of value. Uh, again, everyone's going to have that option out there uh, eventually, no doubt. But yeah, I just don't see too many people paying for anything in Bitcoin. But it's good to know that the option is going to be there. All right. Sports and cryptocurrencies. I mean, they're just heating up, as you saw with the uh, Perth heat getting into Bitcoin and things like that. So crypto.com have now come out and they have bought the naming rights to the Staple Center. And that's the home of the Lakers. And so it's going to be changed to crypto.com arena. So, yeah, this is where it all starts. You know, it the seeds get put into the public's mind when they see, you know, big sports stars starting to get paid in Bitcoin, starting to endorse 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 bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies you know ftx has got the naming rights to i think the miami heat uh center i forget exactly what center it is now but where the miami heat play out of you know now crypto.com is doing this crypto.com i'm pretty sure in uh motor racing or was it ftx it's hard to keep up with them but you know a lot of these big crypto companies are now starting to really push that cryptocurrency you know to the wider mainstream and again sports are massive you know wait for you know some big football arenas over in europe starting to be named uh, after you know crypto.com or ftx or binance or whatever it may be you know the wave really is coming it's you know it's trickle trickle though like you know when you're in the crypto space it can feel like it's happening really fast but the thing is that's only because we're in the crypto space there's still so many people that haven't yet got into cryptocurrency. So imagine when the rest of the world really do catch on and they're all of a sudden trying to you know, buy Bitcoin when there's hardly anything left. I think there's about 2 million Bitcoin available sitting on exchanges because all the other Bitcoin that's kind of being sold in the OTC markets is already basically spoken for. You know, you've got companies like MicroStrategy and... Uh, places like that that are just buying it all up so yeah at some stage there really is going to be a massive big spike in the price i just don't see it coming yet again i'm i'm more with data dash slash nicholas merton that i think it's coming next year i don't know if it pushes out till november next year where he says it could look if it does the scary thing is whatever price it gets to later on, it's most likely going to go higher because we've built up such a strong base. And really at the moment, the base is at about $60,000. Doesn't mean it can't go lower, but there's definitely interest at that $60,000 mark. But there were more people selling 
at around that $70,000 mark, but that won't last forever. All right, Polygon, I mean, they just can continue to grow. Even though their price hasn't done you know, anything spectacular, I do think they're going to have their moment where they absolutely fire up as well. I mean, they've done well over like the last year and a half for sure, but they've been pretty stagnant for probably oh, the last few months, just kind of really traveling sideways. They've you know got down as low as I think about $1.30. They've got up as high as about $2.20, and now I think they're sitting around about $1.60 sort of something. So again, a bit volatile, but that's to be expected. But eventually, I think they're going to rock it up. So Portal, which is a decentralized uh, exchange, partners with Polygon to advance DeFi on Bitcoin. So this is really, really interesting. So per Portal sorry, currently offers fully decentralized on-chain spot and options trading, as well as peer-to-peer -peer lending and borrowing. Now, this partnership is expected to expand these user capabilities with the enhancement of zero-knowledge swap functionality. So, again, ZK roll-ups, which we spoke about the other day that Polygon's getting into, for wrap Bitcoin to Bitcoin, as well as uh, POS wrap Bitcoin to Bitcoin. And in addition, Polygon's going to operate a liquidity-supporting node on the portal decks. So, you know, I've said this before, I got into Polygon you know, for cents, literally cents, and it did nothing for ages. Much like Polygon's kind of doing now, not a whole lot is happening, but it was even less volatile. And so many times I was going to sell. I was just like, this is, nothing's happening, but for whatever reason, I didn't. And then it just started to explode. I'm pretty sure I was getting Polygon for like two cents and three cents. And it made it up to $2.20. And again, I think it's sitting around about $1.60. This is US dollars at the moment. So from two cents, the return has been absolutely outstanding. And I've already taken profits. I've got my money back and some, but I've only taken very small amounts of profits. And I get the feeling like, again, Polygon is just traveling sideways at the moment. Very, very boring. And I just get the feeling like it's going to do exactly what it did when I first bought it and eventually it's going to explode. So many partnerships and so many different, you know, dApps and things that it's uh, part of. Look, here it even says it's got a $1.5 million uh, user base and 400, 400 decentralized applications. They are really a behemoth and they're still growing. So... Again, this whole space hasn't yet exploded. And when it does, the good projects, and in my personal opinion, not financial advice, Polygon are one of those good projects. And it really is one that I absolutely plan to hold long term. It doesn't mean I won't take some profits along the way. You always have to do that. Well, you don't have to. It's your choice, but I definitely will. But my Polygon is basically a long term hold and, you know, I'd be lucky, I think, if I even sold a third of it, in all fairness. Uh, I was originally thinking of selling more, but they just continue to grow, and they, I think they really will be one of the number one layer two scaling options for Ethereum. It's not to say there won't be others, but yeah, Polygon long-term hold for me. All right, now, we spoke about Brave bringing out their uh, wallet, and we talked about how you know it's looking to one-up you know, MetaMask, now that may be the case, but MetaMask, have a look at this. They are reporting 21 million users, and that is up 420% since April. Now from what I uh, heard, I think MetaMask are also looking to branch out and not be uh, just sort of Ethereum-based, although they can be EVM-based, so they can still use other chains through that. But it just goes to show that you know this whole space is still growing. And again, we don't even have that crazy retail farmer yet. Imagine what MetaMask and the Brave uh, Brave browser wallet and things like that are going to do when the real retail FOMO gets here. And again, it probably won't come till Bitcoin's at 100,000. And I just get the feeling like Bitcoin's not going to explode to 100,000. I get the feeling like it's going to slowly creep up. And I think there's going to be some big corrections before we get to 100,000. But it's once we get to that 100,000 and above, I think that's when the retail FOMO starts and things will really start to heat up and just get super crazy. Now, that's just my personal opinion. It's never financial advice. 
you know, I'd love to know your thoughts on, you know, do you think we're going to have this blow off top and sort of December, maybe sort of January? Or do you think this is going to be a slow burn until again, maybe March, June, you know, November next year, we get a blow off top? Because that's really what I'm starting to think. Uh, I mean, I've been thinking it for a while. It's more what I'm starting to believe. But I am prepared that if I'm wrong and we do have a blow off top again in the next few weeks, then, you know, I'll be prepared to take some profits. But I just don't see it coming. That's me, though. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.